All right, what's up guys? Today we're gonna to be going over how to hook up a hard drive to a Raspberry Pi and set it up so every time the Raspberry Pi reboots, it automatically just mounts again. And so we never have to worry about reboots. All right, so the first thing you should know is the Raspberry Pi gives a very little power over the USB bus. If you're using something like a flash drive or an SSD, you don't have to worry about this. But if you're using a hard drive, a drive with a spinning disk, without its own power supply, it's probably not gonna be able to be powered by the Raspberry Pi and you're gonna have issues. You should either get a desktop drive that has its own power supply or look into a powered USB bus that will power the drive instead of relying on the Raspberry Pi. All right, so for this tutorial, you've gotta be able to SSH into your Raspberry Pi. And if you don't know how to do that, I've got a series of tutorials on how to do that. So go ahead and watch those. And so we're gonna start with the hard drive hooked up to the Raspberry Pi, and we're gonna go ahead and SSH into the Pi. And as you can see here, I've SSH into my Pi. I'm on a Mac, so I'm using Terminal. And if you're on a PC, go ahead and SSH using PuTTY. All right, so the first thing we need to do is figure out what drive is connected. And so to do that, we're gonna type sudo fdisk l. And this is gonna list out all the things that are connected that have storage on our Raspberry Pi. So up here, you can see all the RAM modules. And then we go down here and we see disk. And so I've only got one disk hooked up and it's SDA. And it's the portable SSD T3. So that means I know it's the disk that I hooked up. We can also see down here that it's got two partitions. And so we're gonna to have to delete those before doing anything else. And so now that we've identified the disk, it's identified by this dev SDA, that's device storage device A. And so now we're gonna use fdisk to edit this. So we're gonna do sudo fdisk, and then we're just gonna type that path, dev SDA. All right, and so fdisk, basically allows you to do a bunch of commands. And then at the end, you write them and it actually performs all of those commands. So the first thing we wanna do is delete the partition that we just saw there. So we're gonna start with a D for delete and then partition number, you can just do defaults here by clicking enter. And so now partition two has been deleted. Well, we wanna delete the other one too, so we're gonna do D again. And now partition one has been deleted. Do this until there are no more partitions on your drive. So now that we've deleted the partitions, we want to create some. So to create some, we hit N for new, partition number, default, first sector, default, last sector, default again. And now it's gone ahead and created a new partition for us. And we can see that with a P. And so now you can see right here, we're going to have a 465 gig partition on the drive. And so since we like that, we now are going to commit the changes by hitting W for write. And just like that, we now have only one partition and we can go ahead and check that by doing fdisk elegant. And so once again, we can see that there is just one partition there. All right. And so now the next thing we need to do is we need to give it a file system. So since we're using Linux, our best choice is going to be ext4. So it's really easy to do this. I'll go ahead and clear it to give us some space. And all you have to do is type sudo make file system. And then we're going to do dash t for type ext4. And then that path, except it's the path to that partition we created, which is dev slash sda1 because SDA1 is the partition number one that we created on SDA, which is my hard drive. And so now just hit enter. And it will take a minute because it's going through and creating a ext4 file system. And so now we've got a drive, it's properly formatted, but it is not mounted anywhere. On Linux, you not only have to have a good drive, you also have to mount it somewhere. So for a one-time thing, we could just use the mount command. However, as soon as our Raspberry Pi rebooted, that would go away. 
And so I'll just go ahead and clear it again to give us some room. All right, so the first thing we need to do is give it somewhere to mount. And so right now I'm at the root level, so if I do an ls, we can see that there is this mnt folder. If you don't have that, you can just do a sudo mkdir slash mnt, and that will create a folder to mount it. But we're not going to do that. Instead, we're actually going to create a folder within there that is going to be used to mount this drive. So we're going to do a sudo mkdir and the path, we want it within the mount folder. And then what are we gonna call it? Well, we'll call it HD1 for hard drive number one. So now we've just created a place for it to mount, but it's currently owned by the root user. So we're going to do a sudo chown to change who owns it, and then your username and your group. It's probably pi colon pi if you're on a Raspberry Pi. And then that path we just created, mnt slash hd1. And so now the Pi user will have the ownership over that drive, meaning it will be easier for us to use that. All right, and so now we have a place to mount the drive. The next thing we need to do is set it up so it automatically mounts on boot. So I'll go ahead and clear it to give us some space. And now we need to figure out what the unique identifier of the drive is. That way Linux will know which drive to mount where every single time. And so we never get a weird circumstance where we have two hard drives plugged in and it accidentally mounts the wrong drive to the wrong place, which you would not want to happen. So to do that, you're gonna do a sudo blkid. And then we go down to SDA and we see that there is this uuid and it's a very long string, but luckily you can just go ahead and copy it. All right, and so the way we're going to use that is we're going to edit the fstab file. The fstab file basically tells your Raspberry Pi or any Linux machine what things to mount when it boots up. So we're going to do a sudo to get root access, nano the text editor slash etc fstab. Basically, we're going to edit using nano the fstab file, which is in etc. All right, and so the fstab file goes through line by line by line whenever the Raspberry Pi boots up and executes each one of these by mounting it depending on how it's written. And so we're just gonna go ahead and create a new line. And we're going to start with uuid equals and then paste in what we just copied. And you're gonna say where you want to mount it. And so we put it in that slash mnt slash hd1 which is that folder we created. Now you give it the file type. So we're gonna say ext4. Now the next are the permissions, and we're just gonna give it default permissions. So we're gonna say defaults. And then finally, there's the extra arguments that we're not gonna get into here, but you're just gonna do a zero and a one. And that's all we need to do. Now on boot up, it's going to mount this UUID which corresponds to the hard drive we added, and it's going to mount it to the mnt slash hd1 folder that we created, and it's gonna know it's in ext format with default permissions. And so now to exit, you do control x to exit, y to save it, enter to write it. All right, and so now we don't even have to reboot to test this. All we have to do is do a sudo mount dash a and it will go through and execute everything in the fstab file. And so now to find out if it worked, we'll do a lsblk. And we can see right here that SDA has a partition called SDA1, and it is size 465 gigs, and it is mounted at mnt slash hd1. That means we've successfully mounted it to the right folder. And so let's go ahead and CD into that. All right, and so now let's make sure this worked. We'll do a touch, basically just creates a file and we'll call it test. And so right here, we do not have permission. So the way we're gonna get permission is we're going to go up a directory with a CD dot dot. And so now we can see that there's this HD1 folder. 
And so we want to change the modification rights to that. So we're going to do a sudo ch mod to change the modification rights, dash capital R for recursive. And then the permissions, we'll just do 777 to give everybody read, write, execute. And then the location, which is HD1. All right, and so now we hit enter to go do it. And so now let's go ahead and CD and see if we can do that now. And there we go. It successfully was able to write this test file. Sometimes you have to change the modification rights because it doesn't give it to you the first time. All right, and so now the last thing we need to do is make sure that this will survive a reboot. So we'll do a sudo reboot. All right, and so once it reboots, go ahead and SSH back in. All right, and so now that it's rebooted, let's go ahead and make sure that we still can write to it and still see everything. So we're going to change directory to that file location. And moment of truth, you can see right here that this test file still exists. And let's try and make sure we can still write to it. And we can still have read write access to it. All right, and so that's all it is. Now this hard drive is mounted to the mount HD1 folder and every single time the Raspberry Pi reboots, it's going to try to mount that drive there. And so we've successfully got that working. And so now that drive will always be there unless of course it's unplugged. All right, well that's it for this tutorial. I hope this was helpful. Go ahead and put in the comments below any other tutorials you'd like to see me make and have a good one. Bye.